supposed to be here for over an hour. I think he's paralyzed. Paralyzed people move their head. Maybe he's dead. Sure, and they have him sitting in a chair. It's a dummy. That's what I think. There's a tendency by viewers to be dismissive of the existence or even the need for good filmmaking technique in movies of the horror genre. But for me, a well-made film is always going to be more effective, more entertaining, and more enjoyable than one that is haphazard. Pin has always struck me as one of the most technically competent and well-written horror films of the era. In 1988, writer-director Sandor Stern brought us his Plastic Nightmare, offered with adept cinematic storytelling. As it opens, we discover our protagonist, a man mistaken for a dummy. When we flash back to Leon's childhood, notice how efficiently the visuals set everything up for us. We immediately see a well-ordered, upper-middle-class home. Seeing the children eating not in the dining room, but in the kitchen, tells us all we need to know about their mother's influence. Their stools furnish us with their names, and mother's vacuuming places an exclamation mark on the message that she is controlling and a clean freak. Their father's introduction is equally telling. Cultured and exacting, he is annoyed by the intrusion of his children. He's responsible in his parenting, but not loving. Ursula, can you count to ten for me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's good. And now, what shall we do with the schoolboy? How about counting backwards by sevens from 100? It's perhaps apt that he is a doctor, and one who allows his children to observe in his office as part of their education. I think we have another case of the flu here, doctor. It's where we're introduced to the titular character, Pin, a dummy mistaken for a man. You're both reaching an age where changes will occur in your attitude towards the opposite sex. Leon's sister, Ursula, is in many ways less infantile, and even as a child she understands that Pin is not a person. She equips each of us with a biological need to join together and create new life, and that is why just as people get thirsty for water, they get thirsty for sex. Does every single person have a need? If they're normal, they do. Any more questions? But Leon is committed to the fantasy, and covets the present Pin has given to Ursula, while her own interest is fleeting. This is just the kind of present I'd expect from Pin. This is why he is so traumatized by the sight of his friend sexually abused. To Leon, Pin is a real person, and it's a painful episode. As strange as Leon is and has been, he's being shaped by the activities of people, at this point at least, stranger still. Do you ever have a need, Leon? No, I'm not old enough. Can't wait to be old enough. I think I'm pregnant. She'll do whatever you tell her to do, Pin. Please, please help her. It's no use, Leon. Leon is right. By showing that Leon remains to apologize for the intrusion allows us to understand that Leon is genuinely unaware of projecting Pin's voice. He isn't doing this as an attempt to trick his sister. He actually thinks that Pin may help. Please excuse her, Pin. She's really upset. I understand. Upon learning of his daughter's pregnancy, the doctor is again annoyed. After all the time you took explaining sex to them, giving them a better start than I had. Where does it get me? A Sunday in the office. He sees nothing unsuitable or unseemly about making his children witness to medical procedures. Aren't you going to observe, Leon? Just as he saw nothing improper about offering them the friendship, of a skinless anatomy model. What must have begun as a harmless fantasy propagated by Dr. Linden 
has become something he no longer recognizes as his own. Pin isn't his any longer, and he seems to glean on some level the horrible delusion into which that fantasy has evolved. I hate that thing being in the car. It gives me the creeps. Don't worry, it'll only be a one-way trip. I'm leaving him with the society. He'll make a good teaching aid. He seems to half fear the doll as an embodiment of his careless indulgence of silly ideas and the cause of his son's clearly distorted perspective. Frank! One way or another, whether through the malevolence of Penn or his own mistakes catching up with him, Watch out! the doctor and his wife will pay the price for giving life to Leon and to Penn. Having already supplanted his father as the voice of Penn, it's a seamless transition for him to adopt a paternal role towards Ursula. What? You know what Mother's doing right now. She's vacuuming heaven. Despite being the black sheep of the family, it is Ursula who feels the impulse to continue honoring their parents. Can we clean up before we go to bed? Another natural impulse that abnormal Leon does not share. You know what I hate? Leon, what happened to all the covers on the furniture? I took them off. I hope you didn't throw them away. I stored them. Unlike his father, who was content to indulge his wife's neuroses and tolerate a certain amount of browbeating, Leon is impatient with his aunt. People don't stay in a place they're not wanted. It might take her a little while to feel the vibrations, but I think she will. Her commanding presence emasculates him, reducing the man of the house to once again the status of a boy. And so, she must go. She is taking over the house. She's changing Ursula. Notice how it's established early on, and in a natural way, that Aunt Dorothy may have a weak heart. Don't worry about that. It'd be good for my heart to move out here. Pin exemplifies the technique of setup and payoff. For every major event, there has been an established Chekhov's gun. There are no wasted moments, nothing shown that is of no consequence. The film is not without its absurdities. It's hard to imagine that Aunt Dorothy would be so terrified at the presence of what is clearly an inanimate object. It's equally hard to imagine that she would fail to observe the boy puppeteering in the darkness. It's amusing to consider how things would have gone if she hadn't been struck down by a heart attack. Leon would have been made ridiculous, and a man in his position cannot afford to be made ridiculous. Judging from the medication on her night table, she had a bad ticker. At about the halfway point, we're introduced to Stan, who will become Leon's perceived rival for the affection of Ursula. Notice the small touch of visually establishing that Stan is considerate. We understand that his interest in Ursula is sincere. He's not like her past boyfriends. In the theater, he is gentlemanly, watching the movie rather than molesting her, and offering her their food to go. She's accustomed to more cursory courtships. Leon is developing into an identity defined by his parents, combining his father's clinical detachment and his mother's obsessive need to control. I think he's less interested in the books than he is in me. Does that surprise you? You've turned into a beautiful girl. But it's clear he hasn't developed the need, and therefore, by his father's definition, is abnormal. You haven't dated since the abortion. Don't you get the need anymore? Instead, he focuses on his sister, wishing her to be as chaste and sterile as himself. When Leon enviously attempts his own date with Marcia, it's a different experience, and it leaves him cold. 
Do you want to go to bed with me or not? I do. His attempts at normalcy to discover in himself the need and to indulge it are a failure. Just knowing he's in the, in the same house bothers me. I'm sorry. He's discovered a greater, more fundamental motivator, the need to give life to Pin. Hello, Marsha. Oh my God. <laughs> Pin, it seems, is more spiteful than Leon appears to have previously conceived. It's just one of Leon's electronic toys. Marsha, it's okay. It's okay, honey, I know. In the absence of a romantic concern to distract him from his obsession with Ursula, Leon refocuses on ridding her and himself of Stan. He lunged from the deepest, darkest passions in us all. She turned without a sound and faced him. He stopped abruptly. It was as if a knife had performed an instant castration. He was looking into the eyes of his sister. His poetry is sick. He's talking about raping his sister. It's just a poem. Come on in. Sit down. Um, can I get you a drink? Hello, Pin. Good afternoon, Stan. Get him. There's been an early mention of the fireplace their parents never used and the woodpile is well established. We don't have time to put the body in the river. What am I gonna do? Hide him in the woodpile. Everything progresses in what feels like a natural way despite the oddness of the story, because these elements are all well set up early in the film. Leon, thank you for being so nice to Stan. Sure. At this point, Pin goes from merely spiteful to derisive, and Leon is being subordinated despite himself. Clean it up. You must have learned something from your mother. Get the sack, put the body in it, take it to the river. The doll begins to exhibit the qualities of Leon's parents, and this is where Pin really begins to take control. The rather clumsy device of having Stan's watch announce itself to Ursula does not feel as forced as it might have if it hadn't been shown to us earlier. Do you like it? It's great. Uh, it's got um, an alarm and it, and it beeps on the hour. As it is, the beeping is half expected rather than seeming like a preposterous plot convenience. done why didn't you help me i have never lied to you or for you i want you to i need you to i don't know how and neither do you and that's why you do it so badly we didn't do it for ursula we did it for you pin is a movie that leaves audiences horrified appalled at the outcome that developed inevitably from its basic premise and as such it's a horror film where Norman Bates was dominated by his mother, Leon has succumbed to the dominant personality that represents for him a benevolent parent figure, in the absence of any such in his biological progenitors. See how the mementos kept are the music box Leon loves so well, and a portrait to remember him by. This isn't vanity, it's in memoriam, because although Ursula's axe fell on the doll, it's Leon who has perished, and Pin who persists. Pin is proof that to make a good horror film, you don't need a large body count or a lot of gore. You just need an engaging, disturbing story, well told. It's for this reason that it has been, and will continue to be, a favorite for many fans. Anyway, we shouldn't be having this conversation. You know the doctor doesn't like me talking to anyone when he's not here.